the rest of the staff, can you put your hands together for your papa, your pastors, that they care for you, they love you, and uh, they continually are praying for you and taking care of you. I am so happy to see that this work of God has prevailed. You know, I know, I know it has not been an easy time, but you guys have prevailed. You have withstood against the virus, against the devil, his mother-in-law, and there is no demon in hell that can stop the work of kingdom power and glory in our Cardano. You are called by God. He destined you. He purposed you to do what you are doing in that city. And my brother, my sister, I commend you for it. I am so, so happy to see you standing. You're looking younger than last time when we met. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm getting old, all these white hairs. I don't know what to do with them. But I love you. I love your church. And I thank God for your sons and your daughters that are standing with you, with you, Pastor, as the head and your help made, Pastor Ruth. Love you guys. Love you very much. You can take your seats. I salute you. I'm live here from Miami. Uh, if Jesus was still around, he would definitely have a home in Miami because it's just always great weather. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, I just, I'm just happy to get to you, teach you the word of the Lord, build you up, edify you tonight, and prepare you for what is coming ahead. I want to speak to you this evening on end time revival. And like your pastor was praying, we are in the end times. An end time revival is part of the end time cycle of God. You may say, well, apostle, what is that cycle all about? The end time cycle of God, it started with the end time shaking. We are getting through the shaking. Uh, still, we see some effects of this virus, but they are yet other things to come because this end time shaking, like in Haggai spoke about, the Lord said he was going to shake the heavens and the earth. We are experiencing only the beginning of the shaking. But in the end time cycle of God, after the shaking, Revival comes. How many of you know that people usually turn to God when they are in trouble? Very simple. We've seen it. i seen, I seen jail, jail cells, tr troubles, uh, harsh times to, to be very good preachers. Because i see seen more people get saved in trouble than when people were not going to anything. So in this shaking, God is introducing his end time revival and introducing the Holy Spirit to the world. So you guys in Africa, in Ghana, is the same as here. We are in the end time cycle of God. End time shaking End time revival follows. That's why I want to speak to you today about revival. After the end time revival, we're going to see the end time harvest of God. The greatest harvest we've ever seen is coming to the church. Because God is using now the church and is reviving the church to go get that harvest. Right after that, number four, we're going to see the glory of God. And finally, we will see the second coming. But today, we're going to emphasize on the revival end. For the next 30 to 35 minutes, I want to teach you what is this revival? What is the purpose of revival? Why does God revive you and I? What does he want? And at the end, we're going to pray together and minister to you. So as an introduction, let me tell you the reason why God is 
bringing, reviving his church is because the church over the years has become dried and dead. It's very sad to see many Christian circles. Christian circles where abortion, homosexuality is normal. We travel around the world. Your pastor and myself, we've been together with Apostle in some encounters. And we've seen the condition of the church. We see how many churches across the world, they are years behind. You see it in the worship. You see it in the revelation of the word. You see it in many areas of their lives. So God, if you look at the book of Acts chapter 2, I'm going to ask you to help me read some of these verses, Pastor. Acts, we're going to see verses 2 and 3. That was revival 1.0. But then Acts 2, 17 and 18 is revival 2.0 because Peter prophesies about what was to come. So let's read Acts for the moment, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. Pastor, you can read it when you're ready. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 2, two, two verses 2 and 3. And suddenly there came a came sound from heaven, from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, wind and, it and it filled all, all the house, house where they were sitting. sitting. And there, there appeared there unto them, them clothing tongues, tongues like, like as of fire, fire and it and sat, sat upon each of them. Amen. Amen. That was the beginning of the church. The church began in revival it was actually an outpouring of the spirit because the early church was revived but now when we look at the church today today we realize that the church lost what the early church had that power that anointing and you and i are blessed to be a part of a ministry that is in revival but not everywhere is like that not everywhere the spirit moves freely. People get healed. People get delivered. That's why you see in our ministry so many testimonies continually because we have been in revival. But not every word is the same. So that's how the church started. It started revived. And then Peter on verse 17 and 18, he's going to prophesy of revival 2.0. If you could read it, Pastor. Verse 17 and 18. Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and, daugh and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servant and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Amen spirit the lord said peter prophesied of what was to come we are in those days where god is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh so let me tell you so you can understand because you and i are really blessed like i'm saying we are in a church that is revived we are in a move of god but not everyone not the whole body of christ is there so many churches, many families, many individuals have lost revival. They are dry. They are dead. They have conformed to religion. And as a consequence, God wants to bring revival. Why do we lose revival? Somebody might ask. I want you to write this down. And remember, revival is nothing more than God bringing back to life that which had died, that which was dead. When God revives something or someone, he brings that thing or, or that person back to life. So the reason why people lost this revival, this hunger, this passion, which I, that's one of the reasons why I love your papa, because since I know him, he has that. You know, 
he has that hunger. He has that passion. So understanding this now, why we lost it. Number one, revival was lost because preachers compromise the truth. The moment you compromise the truth, the spirit lives because he is the spirit of truth. So if you compromise it, he's no longer going to be there. He's going to lift. Many preachers that began only to preach messages to please the people, to appease the people, to be liked instead of preaching the word of God. So some people lost it, number two, because in many circles, families, churches, they rejected the Holy Spirit. You can have revival if you reject the Holy Spirit. I remember I went once to, um, to preach to a place that uh, it was a, a well-known pastor in the city. He had asked me to go minister for him. And when I got there, he told me, Pastor Frank, I know that you really preach with a lot of fire and passion and miracles happen and signs and wonders. But today I have here the man who might be the future president. It was in another country of this country and many famous politicians. So please, can you tone it down a little bit? And I said, well, you know, my dear pastor, I know you are worthy because you have many well-known people on your altar and on the first rows, but don't worry about it. The Holy Spirit is going to take care of it. Yeah, but please, please, pastor, I want to ask you, said, don't you worry about it. Well, in less than 15 minutes, people were on the floor crying, miracles happening. The wife of one of the guys who was running for president has cysts on her breast. She got healed, started weeping, was shaking the man saying, look, 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 I am healed. The power of God came, people speaking in tongues. There is no way that we will even dare for a moment to reject or to dare to tell the Holy Spirit, no, no, you can do that. Whatever there is freedom, the Holy Spirit will move. Whatever the Holy Spirit is, there is freedom. So we must know that if we want a revival, we cannot reject the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Lord. He moves. When he begins to move, let him move. Touch somebody and tell him, let the Spirit move. Number three, many places became critical of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you know, in that church, all they do is cast out demons. In that church, all they do is pray for the sick to get healed. All they do is preach about prosperity. And they became critical of the move of God. You can, you cannot carry a mantle that you criticize. So many people became critical. Number four, there is a lack of fathers in the supernatural. There is a lack of fathers in the supernatural. So understanding this, we have to now see the following. Those are some of the reasons why people are not revived. Churches are not revived. Families are not revived. I have seen parents that when they saw their young kids on fire, they try to hold them back because they were serving God, fired up, and now those kids are in the world. They're not in the church anymore because they became critical of the move of the Holy Spirit in those young people. So whenever you are in a church, who that is in revival, that is revived, you're going to be under an open portal. And let me tell you this. You are blessed to be at a church that is revived because that means 
there is an open portal over your head. It's like if that building, which I've been there, if you were to remove a, the roof out of the church and you will have an open heaven and open access, well, guess what? When you are in revival, you walk on the open heavens. And all you have to do is reach up and grab it. Reach up and take your blessing, take your miracle, reach up. Well, how come, Apostle? Because the heavens are open. And when you walk on their open heavens, you can easily tap into the presence, tap into the power, tap into the spirit. So now, let's see the following. How can we be carriers of this revival? In the Old Testament, how can we be carriers of this revival? In the Old Testament, the presence of God was carried around in a box. But now, you and I carry the presence. You know, ladies, when you go to the hair salon to do your hair and your nails, don't leave the presence at home. Take it with you. So the people in the salon can see the glory and the presence of God. Businessmen, when you go to do business, don't leave the presence at home. Take it with you to the business. Take it with you to your workplace so your boss can see that you carry the presence and he will give you an increase in your pay. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I guess that, I don't know. Is it, is it too late in Ghana, my brother? Did I just, <laughs> I, how can you carry it? Number one, you must participate in this movement. You must participate. If people are worshiping, don't be there with your arms crossed. Lift your hands, participate, <laughs> jump, shout, dance. Be a part of the movement. Many people, when the spirit begins to move, they are spectators instead of participators. The Lord wants you to participate. The Lord wants you to jump in the river. The Lord wants you to be a part of the movement. And number two, you can carry the revival by sowing it into the revival. Now, Let's get to what I really want to touch on this, this evening. What is the purpose of this revival? You know that it's, it's coming after the shaking. We are in this revival. You know how you can carry it. You know what it is. Revival is to bring back to life what was dead to revive, to give life again. You know it. So now, let's see what is the purpose. Are you ready? Can you wave your hands? Are you there? Or do you fall asleep? You have it, right? You're awake? All right. So let's write this down. Number one, the purpose of revival is to restore men to the presence of God. And when I say men, I mean male and female. The purpose of revival is to restore. Look at me. It's to, look, look at my body language. Look at me. It's to restore men to the presence. When Adam was in the garden, there was a separation between God and Adam. What happened, Apostle? Sin came in the way and separated. This man, man, I feel, I feel his presence. You start talking about the presence, and it comes immediately. This man who was face to face with God, this man who had an open portal, this man who who thought 
at the speed of light. He, he was the first Adam. He, he moved in the glory. He, God, the Bible says that God will come down and walk with him in the cool of the garden. But when sin came, there was a separation. When God sees a separation, he must bring revival to revive you again and to restore you back to his presence. It's about time for you to be restored, brought back to the presence of God. God's original intent has always been for you to be in his presence some of you, you have been struggling in your mind to get in the presence. You go to look for God, you don't feel him. You've been battling. That's why God sent me tonight to restore you back to the presence. Come on, if you're going to put your hands together, do it good. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? The Father didn't leave him, but your sin and mine created a separation. So God had to revive. God is coming to revive the church, to restore the church back to the presence. If you write, if you take a note, write this down. A church that is revived is a church that is in continual pursuit of the presence. A church that is revived is a church that is in continual pursuit of the presence of God. If you are really revived daily, you seek the presence, you pursue the presence, you go after the presence. You want the presence. You get up in the morning. You say, I got to have it. It's late at night. You say, I got to have it. It's the middle of the day. And you're thinking about God. you longing for God. you desiring God. you saying, when am I going to meet him? When am I going to go before him? When will I present myself before the Lord? The psalmist said, he said, one thing have I desired. I'm not supposed to preach, but you're making me want to. He said, one thing have I desired, that I may be with him in the house of the Lord, contemplating, beholding his beauty. Because the psalmist knew that the purpose of him being revived, it was to be in the presence. Alive, you go to the presence. You seek the presence. Number two, what, what is the purpose of revival? Number one is to be restored to the presence. Number two, oh, yes, show Marash, Dekel. And I, I already feel it. You can talk about the presence and not expect for the presence to come. Number two, is the transformation of society. God wants to change your neighborhood through you. God brings revival to transform society. He wants to use you to transform your family, your neighborhood, your workplace. Who there works at a bank? Pastor, who works at a bank? Raise your hand. Who works at a bank? You, you could stay there, my sister. Stay there. But the Lord says, I'm going to use you in that bank to carry my presence there. And the Lord says, as you carry my presence, I will use you to minister to people in that financial institution. But at the same time, the Lord says, I have you there. So you can understand that your provision comes from above. 
For God Almighty is greater than any financial institution. And there is a higher economy than the economy that you are a part of on the earth. The Lord says, get ready, for I will give you favor in that bank. I will turn things around for you. And the Lord says, I will give you the blessing that I have promised you. And the harvest that I even prophesied before over you is yours, says God is yours because you've been serving in the house and you've been dead in the house and the lord says i have seen your faithfulness so get ready daughter and i remind you today you are a part of a heavenly supernatural economy god says get ready because there is a harvest at hand father thank you thank you thank you thank you see this when we are revived we may room for the spirit to move. Whatever the Lord tells me, I'll move out of the way. Uh, because the Holy Spirit is Lord. So, number two, God wants us to transform society. As a matter of fact, there's also someone in the congregation that works in the educational system. Who is a teacher that you, te you teach? The Lord says, the Lord is speaking to me as I'm, I'm, as I'm ministering now. The Lord says, son, I see you in a, in a classroom setting. And the Lord says, I am about to bring revival to the school through you. The Lord says, get ready because they are key people in the school that I will use you to witness to. I actually see you praying for healing in the school. And I see you praying for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And God says, I will give you favor with the principal of that school, with the key people in that school. And there's going to be a move of God among the students. Is it, um, is it uh, like high school, middle, middle, I'm not sure, middle school? Uh, different, different, uh, Different grades. From uh, upper, 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 look, look, middle school to upper school. Middle school. So middle I see that some school. of these young kids are going to begin to be filled with the spirit. And there's going to be an outpouring. So the Lord says, get ready for I'm, I'm going to do that in your school. Are you believing God for a car as well? A, a vehicle? Have you asked God for a vehicle? Yeah? You don't, you don't have to tell me much. Yeah? Okay. I Don't worry. I didn't hear you, but don't worry about it. God is giving you a new vehicle. He's going to do a miracle supernaturally. God is going to do it. Take it. It's going to happen because you've been serving. You've been there in the house. And the Lord says, son, I'm going to honor your faithfulness. I'm going to honor your service to the man of God. I'm going to honor your service to me, says the Lord. So get ready. Because from here to Pentecost, you're going to be driving that new vehicle. Father, thank you. Oh, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So God wants to transform society. He brings revival to transform society. Number three, he brings revival to transform the heart. And anytime, Pastor Ruth, if you could be ready to worship, because I already, I'm, I'm feeling, you, you can speak about the presence and not expect for the presence to come. And not Number three, the presence to God brings revival. God brings revival. Okay, are we good with the sound? You good? All right. So God brings revival to transform the heart. And the Lord is showing me there is about two of you in the congregation about two people 
that you lost. You lost someone that was dear to you and your heart has been aching. But God is here and has sent me today to bring healing to your heart and bring transformation in your heart. And it's going to be a healing. If, if you could wave your hand that you lost either a, a close. Okay, I want you to stand. I see three of you waving your hand. I want you to stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I see that, uh, you know, if, if you could just lift your hands and maybe they, they have, um, a Pastor, if you have a person on the keyboard just to maybe play softly because I see that the way we go in any moment, I will stop the teaching because I see the Holy Spirit is moving. Those of you who lost someone that was dear to you, okay, if the if the music is giving the the echo, don't worry about it. Just those of you that are standing, receive Father in Jesus' name. A couple of you that you lost a family member, you've been in pain. You have been in pain. But the Lord is healing your heart now. The Lord is bringing healing. If one of the leaders could come close, one of the leaders that I'm and just lay your hands on, on that person. There is about four people standing behind there that they lost a family member. Father, right now, bring healing. Bring comfort. May the comfort of your Holy Spirit, yes, just receive the presence of the Lord is there. Receive that comfort. Receive that comfort. Receive it. Receive it. Receive that comfort. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, the Lord is healing, healing the hearts. Bringing healing, bringing healing, bringing healing, bringing healing. Yes. Removing, removing the sadness. Yes. Just, just hug her, my sister, Pastor Ruth. Just hug her. The love of God is just coming over her. As the Lord is just bringing restoration yes holy spirit you're bringing comfort revival comes to heal the heart revival comes to restore, restore the, heart. the heart yes father thank you number four revival comes number four revival comes to empower the believers to gather the harvest to empower the believers to gather the harvest and and don't worry if you feel the presence coming on you and you feel that god is restoring reviving something in you that was dead don't don't you worry don't you hold back John 4, 34 and 35. If you could help me read, Pastor. The book of John, chapter 4, verses 34 and 35. I really feel the spirit moving. I think after I give you this next bullet point, is, is we're just going to let the spirit move. Go ahead, Pastor. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Sorry, 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 All right. You say, you say, you say that is four months. I, I say, I lift up your eyes. Because the harvest is ready. 
the Lord sent me tonight to prophesy to you that there is a harvest that is coming, that is due to you. And from today, get ready for the next few weeks until Pentecost. Get ready, says the Lord, for you're going to see a harvest of souls, a harvest of finances, a harvest in your family, in your health, in many areas in your life. And the Lord says, get ready, get ready. You're going to see it. You're going to see that increase. You're going to see the multiplication. You're going to see, the Lord says, so get ready. There is a harvest coming. For the enemy tried to delay it, but I break every spirit of delay. I break the delay of the enemy. And I release a harvest upon you. And I tell you, by the spirit of God, and Do I not say four months, the for the now. fields are ready now, says the Lord. Now is the time for harvest. Now is the time for revival. Now is the time to take territory. Now is the time to advance the kingdom. Now is the time to serve. The Lord says, I am breaking the delay. I am breaking the delayer. And I'm releasing you, I'm thrusting you into a new harvest, says God, into a new economy, into a new place in your calling, in your purpose, says the Lord. And I'm removing, do not say, God says, do not limit me anymore. Do not postpone what is yours. Now, says God, you take it in the name of Jesus. Sholam Pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. I see harvest, I see harvest. I see harvest, 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 I see Dielo marasu kele brandu ruma shikelo brayele ayo marasu lo brane berebo shikele maru shikela. I see a harvest. I see a harvest. The Lord says, "Do not say four months, for I'm releasing a harvest in your finances. I'm releasing a harvest in your family. Family members will be saved. Financial breakthroughs will take place." The Lord says, I am shifting things. And do not say four months anymore. For I tell you, lift up your eyes. Oh, yes. Lift up your eyes. And see that the fields are ready to be harvested. Father, in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I want to finish with this bullet point. Why does God or where does revival start? Revival starts in the heart. Revival starts in the heart. The heart is the seat of the presence of God. So I want to make a call. All of you that say apostle. I need an area in my life to be revived. My prayer life, my purpose, my service, my, my finances, any area in your life that you need to be revived in. If you say, that is me, Apostle, I've heard this message. Perhaps you need your heart to be transformed because transformation of the heart is what prepares the heart to be the seat of the presence. And that's where revival starts. If you say that is me. And today I want God to revive me. I want you dead in your seat to lift your hands. I don't know about Apostle Pastor. If it's good to call the people forward. If it's okay. If not, I, you could be in your seats. You could be in your seats. Please remain in your seats. And in your seats, I want you to lift your hands and I want you to pray aloud with me. 
Say with me, Heavenly Father, I have heard your word and it has brought conviction to me. Today, I come before your presence and I ask you, Father, to revive me. Bring me back to life in every area where I had died. Any area that had died in my life, bring it back to life. Empower me, Lord, to gather the harvest. Today, Father, I repent before your presence so you can bring times of refreshment. Right now, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. And I ask you, Father, restore me to your presence. Transform my heart. And mobilize me to gather the harvest. Say with me, Father God. Say it in a loud voice. Say, Father God, I am mobilized to gather the harvest. In my family, in my finances, in my purpose, in every area in my life. Right now, I am revived. I am in revival. And I receive from that portal anything that I need today. Right now, I commit myself. To, be, to stay in revival, to gather the harvest. Wherever I go, I will be a carrier of that revival. I thank you, Father. I give you praise. I give you worship. And I give you glory. Right now, Lord, restore me to that presence. I want you to lift your hands. Let me pray for you now. And as I pray, the Lord told me some of them, they have struggled to enter into my presence. But today, I'm going to restore them again to the presence. They're going to be restored to their relationship with me because they have allowed cares of the world to come in. And they've been praying, but they don't feel me. So today... They are being restored to that presence. Father, I pray for every single person in this building. Oh, as a matter of fact, they are people the Lord shows me. It's been a struggle for you to pray. You used to have a prayer life, but it's been a struggle for you lately. As a matter of fact, if you're one of those, I want you to get out of your seat and just come, come to the front and, and, and there... If you can in the front, if it's allowed, just lift your hands and the Lord is going to begin to renew, to restore you. Yes, yes, that's what revival is, is bringing you back to the presence. If we can worship, Pastor, if you can begin to worship, because I feel many of them were struggling in their relationship with God. But today... The Lord is calling you back. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah, I see some of you crying. Because it's been really a struggle to pray lately. It's been a struggle to be in the presence lately. But the Lord is restoring you now. There you go. There you go. There you go. Hallelujah. Revival is to restore men to the presence. Come back to the presence. Come back to the presence. The rest of you, maybe you're not in the front, but you say, Apostle, I need to get back to the presence. I've had too many things pulling me away from it. You say, that is me. I need to get back deeper in the presence. Just get on the aisles. Get on the aisles. Get do a prophetic act. Just get on the aisles and lift your hand and get in the presence. Get in the presence. Oh, hallelujah. 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 
That's where your miracle is in the presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Some of you tonight, even you came burdened to the church. But right now, the burdens are being lifted. And the Spirit of God is falling upon. Touch me with your hand. Touch. Jesus. Touch. 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 Touch me with your hand. Everything that had died in them. Jesus. Touch. 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 Touch me. Oh, there is a strong presence. There is a strong presence. There's a strong presence of her. Oh, no. The woman that is in the corner with the, with the yellow, with the yellow blouse. It's a strong presence. The, the presence is upon you, upon the, the young man. You want to be with Strong presence. I, I sense it. Some of you that have been struggling to pray. I don't want to be with God, but today something is breaking. I see the presence on the sound booth. The guys on the sound. I see the presence there. I sense it. 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 Oh, Yamabrosha Kala Maruchi. I see a cloud over you, Pastor George. I see a cloud over you, my brother. There's a cloud over you. And whatever you go, that cloud moves with you. That cloud moves with you. It's an open portal. It's an open portal. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Father, touch. Touch. Oh, oh more. 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 I feel it. 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 I upon you, Pastor Ruth, as you worship. I feel that presence. The power and glory is in church of the presence that is continually pursuing the presence. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The presence. Oh, it's on the young man with the you usher in there with, you know, in front of Pastor George is upon you. It's upon you, so I just worship. Oh, just worship, just worship. Just worship. That, that young man with the white shirt. Oh, strong presence upon you. Oh, Jesus. No 
wanna go to wanna go change. Oh yes, touch, touch the woman in the black with a green dress. I don't the touch me. Touch me with your hand. Oh, the ushers, if you are sure, 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 Jesus, I don't wanna go. No one is the way I can. There is a woman feeling it. Touch me with your hand. Very sis, sis in your ovaries. You've been bleeding. You are bleeding now. change Jesus oh father God I worship you I honor you and I give you praise today father we make a commitment to stay in your presence. We give you glory, yes. honor, and praise. I want you to take your seats for the moment. Oh, keep the presence. Stay in the presence. Stay in the presence. Stay in this atmosphere. In this atmosphere, anything you sow. God immediately multiplies it. Anything you give, God multiplies it right away. Because in the presence, there is life. So I want us tonight to take a moment to honor God with our tithes, our offerings, and remember your tithe opened the windows of heaven, but your offerings push the blessings down. And in this presence, anything you sow is multiplied. Tonight, I want you to sow a special offering. And I want you, if you're given by way of an envelope, that you will write on that envelope revival. 
anything that had died in you, God is bringing it back to life. Dead contracts for business people. As a matter of fact, someone did as well. You have digital assets. You own digital assets. Cryptocurrency. Digital assets of any kind. God is about to multiply those assets. God is about to do it. He's going to multiply it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm, 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 mm. Anything, uh, it's, it's, what, what is the person? I want you to stand. If you say, Apostle, I, I own digital, that's the word. If, if you are the person, you know what I'm talking about. Digital assets. God is about to multiply. Just stand. You, you stand. And God is about, okay, I, I see you. I'm sorry, the camera was short, so I couldn't see you. I see you now. God is going to multiply those assets for you, son. God is going to multiply. Oh, I see, I see a couple of other people standing. And the Lord says, watch how those assets are going to increase in price. The Lord says, do not fear if for the moment they seem to be slipping away. But the Lord says, be assured, I will multiply and I will use those digital assets as a stream of income for you, as a blessing to you and as a blessing to the body of Christ. The Lord says, get ready. For I am about to show you by the Spirit where to invest. The Lord says, I will show you by dream, by the Spirit, and even by the leading as your apostle, your pastor leads you. You will tap into great wealth. And there will be a transfer from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. There will be a wealth transfer that will be released to you. Father, I bless this businessman. May you multiply, as you have said, those digital assets. Father, thank you. In this presence, everything we sow is multiplied. You can take your seats. Anything we sow is multiplied.